Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Thursday. I hope you're doing well. For those of you that are new, my name is Susan. I am a freelance fiction editor of science fiction, fantasy, and romance. And today we're going to be talking about the do's and don'ts of finding an agent. Finding an agent is something that's pretty well known for those that want to go into traditional publishing, but it's also a really great idea for anybody that is doing self or indie publishing because there are other rights such as foreign rights, movie rights, audio rights that you may want to have an agent helping you with, helping you make those deals and contracts. So let's talk about my top six steps on how you should find an agent, the do's of finding an agent, and I'll tell you my top three don'ts of what you don't want to do as you start to dive into this process. So the very first step you want to take is finish your novel. Unless you have already been published, you have a number of books in your backlist, and you can show an agent what you've written before four, you want to have a complete novel to be able to give them if they request it. Most agents are only going to ask for the first few chapters, but you don't want to fall into the trap of finding an agent that's interested, sending them the first three chapters, and then they ask for the full manuscript and you have to say, well, can I get it to you in six months? That's absolutely not what you want to do. You want to make sure you have something to give them the moment they are interested. The second step is research your market and your agents. So now for most of you, you've probably already done some of this market research, understanding your genre, what's out there, what's popular, what is selling right now. A key thing you want to understand when reaching out to agents is what's coming out in the future because that's what they're going to be looking at. Your book, if you sign with them, is not going to be out tomorrow or next week. It's going to be out in six months, nine months, two years. So you want to make sure you're keeping your eyes to the future and you understand the market so that you can tell them, hey, this is exactly where my book fits and this is why it's going to work and this is why people will love it. And you, they can see the potential in that and they can understand the saleability of it. The other part of this research that you might not have yet done is research into agents. Understand with those books that are coming out, who's representing those books? or your favorite books that are current, the books that you're using as comps for your own novel, who represented those? Is it something that they're looking for more books like that? Looking up agents online or on social media, a lot of times they'll use the hashtag manuscript wish list, so MSLW, I think I said that right, manuscript wish, no, MSWL, MSWL. You can look that up online and a lot of agents and editors are putting out there, hey, I would love to see a book like this or I would love to see an idea like this. Looking at that, understanding what they're looking for is key because then you can know what they're actively trying to acquire right now and find an agent that fits the book that you are actively trying to sell. Third, build a platform. Now this is something that you don't necessarily need to have millions of followers on Instagram or Facebook to be able to get an agent to sign you. That's not at all true, but it does help to show that you have a connection with the market that you're trying to reach. You're already talking to readers and book reviewers and people in that market that they're going to be familiar with you once your book comes out. Or maybe you're taking part in contests and you have that name recognition there. Anything that the agent is going to be able to take and give to a publisher and say, look, they already have this recognition. You'll be able to sell to these people, or we can already see that this author is popular with X, Y, and Z. It'll only compound on top of this awesome book that they have to give you. It's not a requirement, but it's something that actively helps. And especially nowadays with social media being such an active part of lives in general, let alone publishing, it's a really great idea to already have a solid platform to be able to present to your agent so that they have that as a selling point in addition to your fabulous book. Fourth step is networking. So now you've already done the research, you've looked at some agents that may be interested in your book when you finish it or if you've already finished it. You've connected with book reviewers and maybe, you know, booktube people on Instagram or on social media, what have you, and you've started talking with them, you want to make sure to foster this. So start reaching out to them on their content, not talking about your book, not trying to sell yourself, but just genuinely trying to make that connection. You want to be able to have those contacts so that when you are trying to sell your book, when you are trying to let people know that the publication is coming, anything like that, you already have then that natural relationship where it would be very easy to reach out and say, hey, would you mind posting about this? Or especially with agents, 
friends, talking with them about their interests, having that just very shallow contact on Twitter or Instagram, what have you, like, hey, I really loved this TV show too, or hey, I loved that you said this, anything like that, where then, and again, I cannot stress this enough, very genuine and infrequent. You don't want to spam them in any way, shape, or form. You want it to be a genuine, natural connection. Then once you send that query letter, they can say, hey, I, I recognize this name. We've talked before. And then they're not only looking at, hey, did I like this book? But they already know they genuinely connect with you as a person, which is important in an author-agent relationship. So you want to start that networking early on and start to reach out to people, make those connections. Even with agents, you may not query. It's just good to have industry connections, start talking to people, learn and understand from their experiences, and to be able to have that network ready to go for when you do move forward with your publishing journey. The fifth step is writing your query letter. So there are massive amounts of resources, websites, people out there that can help you write your query letter, that can tell you what should be included and how you should shape it and everything like that. For me, it really comes down to three things. First and foremost, you want to have a good, concise hook. So this means if I, as an editor, came up to you today and said, in one sentence, tell me what your book is, that you're able to do that. It's this and this mixed with this, or it's this girl meets boy with this, or something like that that's very snappy, that tells you what it is, is able to hopefully show the genre, and gives you the hook so that you understand not only, hey, it's a sci-fi romance, but it's a sci-fi romance that takes place on a ship that flies upside down or something like that where it shows what's different about it in a quick snappy informative piece. The second piece of a query letter is recent comps. So you want to show your understanding of the market to this agent and where you fit into it. You want to make their job as easy as possible. Agents want to sign you. They don't get paid until they sign an author and get them sold. They work on commission. By the way, just a quick note, if an agent tries to sign you and tells you to pay them, that is not a real agent. Run, run far in the opposite direction. Anyway, agents want to sign great clients because they want to obviously then sell them to a publisher or an audiobook publisher or what have you to be able to get paid and to be able to help you reach your goals. So you want to make sure you're showing them your marketability. Hey, this book came out and I saw that you have this book on your list that's coming out next fall. My book fits right in nicely with this, but it's with this twist. I think it would be perfect for you. Here's why. And showing that context, building that profile for them so that they can see not only obviously if they love your book, but also how they'll be able to sell it and how they can understand how it fits in the market now and in the future. Finally, personalize it. So this goes in a little bit with what I was just talking about, but you want to make sure your agent doesn't feel like you just sent out a hundred requests to agents and you're just hoping somebody bites because that is very impersonal. They're not going to want to work with you and it's, it's, it's not going to get the reaction that you want. What you want to do is look up what they're interested in, what is recent on their list, what authors do they have, everything like that, and be able to say, you know, hey, we've spoken on social media. I loved that we got to talk about X. I actually have a book coming out. I think you'd be perfect for it. Or maybe even if you don't have that intimate connection, you can say, hey, I saw that you recently acquired this. This type of book is really popular right now and mine fits exactly in this, but with this twist that makes it different. Here's why you'd be perfect and here's about me. So you want want to make sure you're making it personal to each agent, again, so they feel like you're talking directly to them and understand that you would be interested in a partnership directly with them, not just, I just need an agent. That's not what the vibe you want to give off. With those three things, you can really make a great, confident query letter that you can be happy sending out. Finally, have a plan. So obviously, the ideal situation would be that an agent reads your query letter in your first three chapters and they get back to you and they say, let's have a call. I loved it. Let's talk. And then what do you say? <laughs> you want to make sure you have an idea of where you want to go and how they can help you get there. Whether it's that this book is maybe a one-off, but you love the romance genre and this is how you see yourself fitting into it, or maybe that's book one of six. So if that one sells, they'll have tons more to sell along the way. So obviously getting them invested and wanting them along for the journey as well. 
If maybe you're interested in self-publishing as well as doing the traditional route or you want their help with the foreign rights or the movie rights and being able to get them involved on that side of your business also, again, I cannot stress this enough. This is a partnership. This is something that you both want to be actively involved in and you want to make sure both you and your agent have a clear vision and a mutual vision of where you want to go to make sure that you both can be working towards the same goals together. Finally, my three don'ts when you're trying to find an agent. I mentioned this just a little bit ago, but I cannot stress this enough. Do not, do not mass email out your query letter. Not only does it make it absolutely easy to just file or throw away because it's clearly not meant for that specific agent and they're looking for somebody who wants to work with them, who wants to be in that partnership, but also there is some benefit to making sure you're only sending out a few at a time. And I say this for two reasons. First and foremost, if you send out all of your query letters at once, even if you've personalized them, all of your query letters at once, then you go back the next day and you suddenly see it. You see the misspelled word or the missed comma or what have you. And now you've sent it out to every agent you could think of that you wanted to look at your stuff. And now every single one of those letters has that same mistake in it because you didn't take the time to just send out a couple and do it over some period of time so that you have that chance, if anything goes wrong, to correct that mistake. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, a lot of agents will come back sometimes quite quickly with feedback, especially if it's a no. And now I know authors don't love to hear no, no one loves to hear no, but agents sometimes are really great at saying no, but, which generally means they may not feel like you fit on their list or they don't think they have the vision to sell your novel, but they can see the potential or maybe they have feedback that might help you hone your book or your pitch in the future. And the most heartbreaking thing I see is when authors get this feedback and they agree with it. They're like, yes, that's going to help my book. Or yes, I love that idea. Let me incorporate that. But they've already sent out all the rest of their queries. So then you have this idea and it's great, whatever it may be, but now you can't show that to all the other agents that you want to query that might be perfect for you because you've already sent out all the other requests. So make sure you're sending out a few at a time. Take your time, allow for either possibly correcting any mistakes, also for any feedback that you might be able to adjust. Second, don't be afraid to follow up, but also take rejection gracefully. So most agents, when you send out a query letter, will likely have a form response. Hey, I got it. Here's how many weeks it usually takes. They don't want you following up the next day because just with the mass amount of requests that they get, it's not possible for them to get back to people that quickly. But once the allotted time has passed, or if you didn't get a form, hey, this is how long it'll take me, wait a couple weeks. And it, I would recommend a couple of weeks. It does take time. They get hundreds of emails a day. Wait a couple of weeks, check back in. Hey, I sent you a query letter a few weeks ago. I know you got it. I just wanted to double check and make sure you didn't have any questions for me. I would love to work with you because X, Y, Z. Make it brief, make it easy. They can get back to you and say, no thanks, but here's why. Or they can say, yeah, it's just taking me more time or anything like that. Don't be afraid to follow up. Give them their due time to get through it. You don't wanna follow up tomorrow, but certainly feel like you're able to check back in. But if they do get back to you with a no or a no but or what have you, take that gracefully. I cannot tell you how many horror stories I've heard from agents where it was a book and it, maybe it was a great book, but it just wasn't right for them. And they told the author no, and they told them why. And instead of saying, okay, thanks, maybe we can work again in the future, or maybe we can do something else. The authors come back with, you know, either sort of mean comments or even comments where it's like, no, and here's why you're wrong or no, and here's where, how I can adjust it to make it more like this. If they've said no, accept that, 
take a step back, maybe take a day or two before you respond back. Definitely thank them for their time. Maybe if it's a relationship you can foster for the future, definitely leave that door open and otherwise keep moving on. There are a ton of agents out there. You want to make sure you're finding the agent that's right for you and right for the partnership for your book and your publishing journey moving forward. So if somebody said no, they're obviously not the right fit for you. Even if you think that they might be perfect, there's a better match for you out there to find. Finally, don't be afraid to pivot. So you've sent out your query letters, you've taken your time, they were absolutely perfect, and unfortunately, you're just getting rejection after rejection back. There are a variety of reasons that this can happen. Maybe it's something that you should look at self-publishing right now. Maybe it's something where you wrote a superhero book and those aren't selling right now, but maybe you have a gothic mystery idea that you can cultivate and send out. Or maybe it's something where this just isn't the time right now. Maybe you need to take a step back, work on your writing and author platform, build up, build that bigger network to be able to go back out on query in the future, whether it be with a new version of this book or a new idea, to be able to try and find an agent again once you're on better footing, once you have a better platform to sell them on. Finding an agent can be messy and complicated, but you can make it infinitely easier by following these do's and don'ts and finding your way to the right partnership for you, for your book, and for your publishing journey. I hope this helps as you dive into querying and finding an agent. I can't wait to see where you land and what your next steps are in your publishing journey. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out or you can comment. Definitely like and subscribe below. It helps the channel. And and until next week, keep writing. <music>